and welcome to Domain Investors Television. I'm your host, Morgan Linton, and we are live at Traffic Vancouver 2010. I am joined once again by Dan Warner from DomainAdvertising.com, the CEO of DomainAdvertising.com. Dan, welcome back to the program. Thank you. So, Dan, you guys are doing some pretty exciting stuff, and I actually had a chance to sit down with you uh, when I first came in, and you showed me the new platform you guys are working on. Why don't you tell my viewers a little bit about it? Okay, well, um, it's a little bit complicated, as, as some things are in this space, but the, um, uh, it's, it's, the new platform actually is a really robust, uh, rather a content management type style system. It allows you to do a, a lot of different functionality over time. Uh, the, the first release we come out with it is basically, has, it takes advantage of an image library. It has around 14,000 images in it, and they all match individual commercial phrases, which have been hand-selected as well. So it's, um, I guess we could actually open up and show you one of them right now. And it gives you a little bit better explanation. Here's one for musical instruments, one over here for football. Uh, this is it's basically clickable images so that you can actually go in and the most commercial phrases are actually targeted. And you go, um, <clears throat> users just have a better, better time, a better experience when they come in. So users, when they come in to... Um, a website, they, they actually go through a bit of a, a transition where what they're, what they're doing is they first come in and they, they have an original thought they're actually trying to actually go find. Um, the way that they express that original thought is actually by typing in a domain name. And the first thing they have to overcome is they have to have recognition that where they've actually gone has meaning to what their original thought was. So there's a certain degree of acceptance there. Then they actually have an emotional response, and that emotional response comes before a cognit cognitive response. So people actually feel about the domain before they actually think about the domain. Hmm. And once they go through that, um, I think images are a really nice way, image arrays are a nice way of being able to tap into that emotional response first. And then they can actually cognitively look at the phrases on the page, select exactly what they want, and then click basically anywhere on the design and go to a results page where they're getting a Yahoo feed. It's really cool, because when I, when I saw this, uh, I looked at it and I said, that doesn't look like a parking page. That actually looks like a branded website. And I think that what's so smart about this is images. We're all visual people. And I've always thought that the whole idea of having streams of text links doesn't nearly call out as much as an image. If I'm looking for something, I create that image in my head. If I see that image, that's it, I'm ready to go. How hard has it been to catalog those images? Because there's really nobody that's doing that. No, well, I, I think it all really comes down to uh, cost. I mean, uh, the cost of actually doing it in the Western world is extraordinarily high. It takes, uh, if, if you, every image that we select takes about 12 minutes or so uh, to actually select 10 to 12 minutes to select it, to uh, buy it, um, run through quality assurance, cut into seven different aspects, 32 different sizes. And by the time you go through all that for 14,000 different images, you're talking about 150,000 uh, minutes or something along those lines. Um, that's a tremendous amount of labor just to do that one aspect of everything we else, uh, else we do, not even including the technology. So the way we can afford that is that all my staff are in Mumbai, India. It used to be called Bombay. And um, tremendous amount of tremendous people that are there, they're intelligent, they speak English, they have um, a really sound education, and a lot of them have great experience in the domain space. Very cool, and so how did you first start finding, because this is a really hot topic now, is you know hiring in-house versus outsourcing. How did you first reach out and find these people? Like, How would you suggest if somebody else wants to, obviously not do exactly what you're doing, but wants to, wants to outsource, what's some advice that you have there? It's actually a very strange position to be in because uh, our parents, uh, our parent company is Direct Eye. So I got the advantage of actually starting the company with all the advantages. I got all the threshold technology that every other parking company had, and I didn't have to pay for it to get there. Um, my experience, I've already had eight years' experience in the field and the domain space, um, so I'm a seasoned professional. Uh, most of my staff are already seasoned because they worked for Direct Eye. Um, and the thing about India, is, and it, this is, goes for any foreign market, um, the labor is relatively inexpensive. I have a lot of staff that literally work for about a dollar an hour, except those people actually are computer literate, they speak English, and they're, in, they're intelligent, really fun-loving people, and they really enjoy their job. So um, in order to do that, though, you have to hire the right people 
and be able to manage them effectively. Um, and that takes a vested interest of somebody on the ground in India that actually knows uh, how to manage these people properly um, and how to actually get the, to hire them properly in the first place. Um, Directi as a company, we interview um, and it, we interview and take applications for something like 15,000 employees a year. Wow! We actually go out to all wow. the universities in India, um, and Directi is one of the top three companies in India to work for in the IT sector. So when you have all that behind you, you get advantages of getting the best staff. Yes, they're at lower prices, but I, I just hired three designers and took me six months to hire them and we had to go through something like a thousand applications just to get those three wow. designers wow so, so it, it's not an easy thing to do um, if you talk to other people in the industry people that have been in the registrar business hosting companies uh, and the domain business there's been a lot of plays that have actually tried to work out of India or uh, Philippines different countries like that and almost all of them actually have failed miserably because if you don't have people with vested interests that actually live there on the ground, uh, it's really difficult to manage, and yeah. they just won't perform for you. Yeah, it's a really good, good point and good advice. So now you've been in the industry for a really long time. You've founded major companies in the industry. There's a lot going on right now. You know, what do you see is ahead for us if we're looking ahead the next year? What are some of the trends you see going on in the space? Well, I think the biggest trend that's happened in the last uh, two, three years, in particular the last year and a half, is that everybody has been cutting costs. You know, they've just been cutting staff, they've been cutting uh, research and development, they've all their hosting infrastructure, they're looking to save pennies everywhere they possibly can. Uh, the problem with that is that if you're not innovating, you're dying. Yeah. And the, the problem being in a Western world is that the cost of innovating um, is actually you have to squeeze out, a set, for every cent you spend, you have to spend a, a, you have to get a cent and more back in the research and development. Um, effectively, my costs are about a, a fifth of what it is for any other Western mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. And so I can afford to innovate. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. If I was paying Western dollars, I think it would be really hard for me to overcome that cent threshold mm -hmm. in order to actually be able to make more money out of the R&D I did rather than actually um, trying to save the costs. Yeah. So it, it's a very logical and reasonable model that everyone's been following on cutting all their costs and getting rid of research and development. The industry has actually been very stale for the last two, three years. Now, is there anything you tell me, because you're an extremely creative person, I know that you've got way more ideas brewing than even what you're working on right now. Is there any any tidbit you can share of what uh, what the future holds for uh, domain advertising? Well, the, the thing about having such inexpensive resources and, and, have such, and there's such seasoned resources is that there is almost no limits to what we can do. Um, for the first time in my life, I'm actually faced at being the weakest link in the chain. It's, uh, it's more uh, dependent on how many ideas I can come up, up with, rather than the speed of them actually being able to implement cool. them or the cost. That's cool. Very exciting. Well, Dan, thanks again for, uh, for being on the program. I appreciate it. Let all my viewers know where they can find out more information about you and your company. Okay. Well, domainadvertising.com. Just come by and have a look. Uh, we've had huge success with the show. About 70% of the people here have actually signed up for the program. Fantastic. Great. Well, thanks again for being on the program. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Cheers. This is Morgan from Domain Investors Television, live from Traffic Vancouver 2010. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.